For Zion must increase in beauty and in holiness. Her borders must be enlarged. Her stakes must be strengthened. Yea, verily I say unto you, Zion must arise and put on her beautiful garments. Zion, as used here, undoubtedly had reference to the church. At that time, there were but a small body of church members just beginning to emerge as an organization. After having experienced harsh treatment from enemies outside the church, who had been directed to gather together in Jackson County, Missouri, which the Lord had designated as the land of Zion. As though to impress upon these early struggling members their destiny in the world, the Lord in another revelation told them this, Therefore, verily, thus saith the Lord, let Zion rejoice, for this is Zion, the pure in heart. Therefore, let Zion rejoice, while all the wicked shall mourn. The borders of Zion, where the righteous and pure in heart may dwell, must now begin to be enlarged. The stakes of Zion must be strengthened. All this so that Zion may arise and shine by becoming increasingly diligent in carrying out the plan of salvation throughout the world. While the church was in its infancy, the Lord pointed to a time when those early gathering places would not have room for all who would be gathered, for reasons for which he declared that his church should be united. Here are his words. For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And then this command, Arise and shine forth, that thy light may be a standard for the nations. Here he is clearly inferred that the coming forth of his Church in these days was the beginning of the fulfillment of the ancient prophecy, when the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. In these revelations, the Lord speaks of organized units of the church, which are designated as stakes, each of which, to those not of our faith, may think of as a diocese. These units so organized are gathered together for these fundamental purposes. First, for a defense against the enemies of the Lord's worth, both the seen and the unseen. These organizations were to be, as stated in this same revelation, as a refuge from the storm and from wrath when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. In the preface to all the Lord's revelations which he gave from the beginning of this dispensation, he issued this faithful warning which must never be absent from our minds. This prophetic warning was, uh, of eight, in 1831 was given as the Lord declared, so that all men shall know that the day speedily cometh. The hour is not yet, but is nigh at hand when peace shall be taken from the earth and the devil shall have power over his own dominion. Now, 142 years later, we are witnessing the fury of this time, when Satan has power over his own dominion, with such might that even the master in his day referred to him as the prince of this world and the enemy of all righteousness. Today we are witnessing the demonstration of the Lord's hand even in the midst of the saints, the members of the Church. Never in this dispensation, and perhaps never before in any single period, has there been such a feeling of urgency among the members of this Church as today. Her, border, her boundaries are being enlarged. Her stakes are being strengthened. In the early years of the Church, specific places to which the saints were to be gathered together were given. And the Lord directed that these gathering places should not be changed. But then one qualification, until the day cometh when there is found no more room for them, and then I have other places which I will appoint unto them, and they shall be called stakes, 
for the curtains are the strength of Zion. 